Hardcore. You're a hardcore. Did you drink? Oh! It's bad luck. Okay, can we do it again? Yes, let's oh. cheers again. Cheers she didn't again. Drink. Okay, I'm getting drunk already. Sorry. Right. <laughs> the water is crazy. I'm just letting you. Tim, thanks for having us in the VG Lounge. Thank you very much for coming. This Appreciate is it. fantastic. This is the first time you've met this, these people? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. Delay. Hello. Crystal Hall. Crystal. Right. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's, thank you for having awesome us. Awesome here. It's great here. You're not going to think that in five minutes once you get to know them. Then you want to want to kick them out. That's how it works. <laughs> okay, so we're here to talk about the, the Winnipeg Winnipeg Whiskey Festival. Right, and we're talking about the food portion. Right, so this is the seventh annual. How many times have you been participated in it? I have been here for every single one. So I've been here to, with the hotel uh, for seven years, uh, two of which were uh, are now as executive chef, and yep. previous to that, executive sous chef. How do you manage to cook for such a large group? I know you're used to doing banquets and stuff like that, but this is kind of a different animal doing for the whiskey festival. Well, with whiskey fest, I mean, it's ultimately we understand how people's eating habits are, uh, but ultimately it comes down to the amazing team that we have here at the Fairmont Winnipeg. Uh, you know, the culinary team truly come together as a true team, and they. Really, uh, it's it's fantastic how they work so well together. Um, they show their true passion for food, and it comes out. Right, no holes barred on what you're making. You showed us downstairs a couple dishes that you're making, which are sitting now in front of us. So why don't we talk about those? Uh, so what we have here, this is a, a, a 24-hour smoked uh, brisket, slowly it's terrible, cooked. Terrible, by the way. <laughs> Brutal. Oh my god. <laughs> and this will be on at, at the whiskey festival. That's correct. Yeah. So okay. we'll have chefs up in the in the room carving the the brisket, uh, the smokiness, the smell. It'll just it engulf the room. Amazing. So uh, we've used uh, hickory as well as uh, some charcoal briquettes that uh, help generate a little bit of extra smoke and, and just slowly cook. It. And your rub? What's the seasoning on that? Is it secret or completely secret? <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I guess we're gonna have to taste it and guess. It, it is lacquered in our rooftop honey. Oh, though, okay, okay. Let's talk about dessert. Uh, so dessert. So uh, the amazing thing about this dessert is it's something that uh, it's a sticky toffee pudding. Um, and we used uh, Northern Harvest uh, Crown Royal uh, in the toffee sauce. Um, the cool thing about the dessert is ultimately my, my, it's my grand my grandmother's recipe um, and back even the Crown Royal. <laughs> well, kind of, well, whiskey, whiskey was right. <laughs> um, so when they were younger, and, and Grandma would, uh, when I was younger, it brings me back great memories. Uh, but when she was younger, they would, uh, they didn't have very much, right? And simple things around the farm would be flour, sugar, um, they had uh, and cream. And so you'd be able to make that toffee sauce really easily. And the pudding itself, she would make inside of a, an old jar that she would, it's like a steamer pu pudding. Um, and she would make it inside an old jar, it'd be reused, and she, uh, uh, she would make this amazing dessert and not only to me food brings back these great memories and sites mm -hmm. these great uh, uh, looks back and, and this whiskey uh, toffee pudding is truly something that brings me back and it's something I love to share with everyone. The menu that you have is it's kind of no no expense is spared it's really it's really nice like when I read what you guys had on there it's, it's kind of crazy so <laughs> How did you come up with that? Is it a team effort? Or how do you guys really decide what you're going to put on that menu for this event? Well, ultimately, I mean, we, when we build menus, it's uh, it, there's inspiration through whiskey. I truly enjoy drinking, uh, <laughs> you know, scotches, whiskeys. And, do I. And it, it really is something, it's something I've really what do you think into. Of <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, you're constantly doing these tastes uh, and try to pair with it and thinking what goes well with it and then um, you just make those little notes and then you 
again, collaborate with the rest of the team um, and and see where, where it kind of goes. And sometimes we have to reel ourselves back in because we're like, okay, now we're getting a little too crazy here. Um, but it, it really is, I mean, the Smoke Brisket Kit is something that we've really uh, been working on diligently over and over. And, and of course, it's a hard, hard job to have to make it needed. Yes. It's really hard. It looks and like I smells want to try. delicious. See, there's a piece yes. there with press my them, press name. Them. I'm going to try this piece right here. It's got my name on it. You're going to rescue it? Yeah. It looks fantastic. <laughs> Some of the other stuff on the menu looked really neat too. That you have the um, mini pierogi Poutine bar? Yes. So what is that all about? What, like? So quintessential Manitoba, uh, you know, pierogies are kind of like a way of life here. Uh -huh. um, and poutine is really popular. I've never tried pierogies before. No. No? <laughs> or poutine? Uh, Neither. Or brisket. <laughs> Am I the only one trying? You guys were downstairs we, we, trying. Oh yeah, we had, why do you think okay. it took us so long to come up? Yeah, <laughs> just exactly. cutting and reheating. Okay, I, I don't have a knife. Usually, so how would you serve this brisket in this restaurant? Or, or? Uh, we would just uh, slice it yeah. and, and just on a bun. On a, on roll, a bun. Uh, some coleslaw with it. You no know, dipping jus or sauce? Uh, or? You can't. I mean, really, uh, there's, there's, there's no real need to. Uh, <laughs> so juicy. That's why. So no, I'm talking about like the drippings from the, the meat itself. And oh. <laughs> it's just, you know, just got yeah, to yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally with that. Yeah, yeah. Totally <laughs> yeah. Soak your biscuit in it, too. Yeah. Oh, it is really yummy. So from start to finish, how long did it take you to come up with this menu? Do you know what I mean? There must be a... Sometimes, when I mean, you've been cooking for a while, it's almost like you know too much. If you have other people that are collaborating, maybe they have a lot of input. And like you said, sometimes you have to reel yourself back. So from the day that you know that you're going to start, to the day that you actually finalize that menu, how long does it take you to come up with that? Uh, well, with this one, it took, it took a better part of uh, three weeks. I mean, ultimately, you have to be in the right... I mean, it's silly to sound, the right state of mind. Um, you can't be worried or stressed out about something else. Uh, if you want to be creative, you can't just say, okay, I'm going to do it now. You kind of have to do it when it kind of feels right. right. And it sounds kind of corny saying it like that, but, but it's true. it really, like, like, you have to be feeling the right way. And uh, sometimes you have to be you know, willing to just to get up and walk away from the computer that you're working on right. um, and, and come back to it. And, and really, it just... Sometimes it could take something and write a menu in, in five minutes because you're really feeling it or you're feeling really passionate about something. Um, you know, you drive great ideas. We used to do poutine bar or a poutine as a, um, an option. But the worst thing is, and I don't know if, if you guys have ever had that happen, during a poutine buffet, the worst thing is is cold french fries. Yeah, yes, they're gross. Yes. They're gross. Yeah, it's gross. I won't even, even bother. Even nuking french fries are gross. Yeah. It's even more gross. Yeah. Right? Gotta be fresh and warm. Exactly. So, I mean, that was always a downfall of it. I mean, it's good. And, you know, at 12 o'clock when you're Juice. 15 drinks in, it's <laughs> no problem. Uh, you eat anything. But, um, the brogues, the great thing is they stay out. Uh, they hold themselves. They're, they're extremely, uh, some great moisture. They're crispy on the outside, uh -huh. uh, you have cheese curd, bacon, I mean you lend itself to, to so many things that go well as a poutine. Yes. Um, you take like a uh, curled farmer sausage, um, you know you can use a white sausage gravy mm. with it, it's a sour cream, I mean it's All endless. Yeah, it's endless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of them, <laughs> amazing. I am and hungry there, again. What were some of the other self-serve type bars? At the a sushi. Uh, we have a live uh, sushi uh, bar for that as well. Yeah. Um, so we what? Have yeah, dude. Sushi being made uh, to order there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and well, obviously, because it go goes so quick, they also have some already uh, ready to go for everybody. Again, but like salmon lends itself so well. Mm -hmm. uh, pairings with whiskey, uh, tuna, um, just even like the salami from soy. The nori has the earthy flavors that just go. It just works so well. This event, it's not a cheap event, but it sells out every year. Tons of people come, it seems very high end. Do you feel like every year, seven years now, that you gotta top yourself food wise every year? I do feel that we have to. <laughs> um, you know, and with us, we're never, we're never happy with what we do. And as, as chefs in the kitchen here, we, uh, you know, we recognize when we've done something right. <laughs> But when we do something right, we always look to try to improve it, and right. we have to always continuously make it better. Um, you know, it, it is—it's—it's—it's it's, it's not a cheap 
it's not inexpensive. Uh, it's not inexpensive, but that's it's definitely true. worth it. But it is definitely worth it. I mean, with the amount of uh, you know whiskeys that you have the chance to, to taste, there's like honestly, the food is endless. Basically, um, you don't you. <laughs> You'll swagger in, you definitely stumble out, and you'll be full. I can guarantee that. <laughs> so well, it speaks volumes when Winnipeggers. <laughs> My kind of night. Kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> it sells out. Yeah, you know exactly. And this year now it's with two nights, so um, you know I'm, I'm excited for the the prospect of it selling out on both nights. Um, you know, gives everybody a little bit more room, and, and every year it sells out. So there's always people that are disappointed because they didn't get a chance to get the tickets. So um, you that's know, a good problem. And there's special events on Thursday as well. Is the food involved on the Thursday night special events, or is that mostly just with the uh, the whiskey side of things? I think it's mostly just okay. with the whiskey side of things. That there'll be like uh, custom tastings right. um, curated by some of the. Yeah, this uh, one's close to my house at the Grand uh, Liquor Store. Oh, okay. that's right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And their presentation. They have an education center. So they and do. you're part of that? Oh, okay. I'm. I'm not. I've attended oh, in the last okay. couple of years. Oh, you have. Okay. Yeah. So he is part of it, but he's just drinking. He's right? just <laughs> enjoying. Yeah. Yeah. You're relaxing. Yes. Okay. Speaking of which, do you actually to get to enjoy the nights that you were doing here? After you're done cooking, whatever, do you actually get to sit down and have some whiskey? Like you, you know? Uh, when I get home. The whole night yeah. goes by and you're working. He's not drinking at work. <laughs> after he's done work, he can be at work, have a whiskey after you're done work. Yeah, uh, it, <laughs> He's we, like, we have the opportunity, it. but so honestly, after a long day, the hardest thing is, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm knackered. I, I want to get home yeah. uh, and see the kiddos. And once I know I'm comfortable at home and I don't have to drive anywhere, then I can feel comfortable and have a have that uh, have that glass and. It just works out so perfect because then I want to eat. I want to be relaxed. I don't yeah. want to be rushed, and I want to sit down and really enjoy it. Yeah, I think that's the way to do it. Perfect. My last question is: I'm assuming that this is going to play a big part in the backdoor thing that you have going on. Yes. So, so we're playing around with some new ideas with the backdoor. Um, uh -huh. We we attend that? No. Okay. Tell her about it. So we've got want, uh, our backdoor burger that we do. So we oh. do backdoor burgers. So literally uh, sell food out of the back door. Between. Wow. That's yeah. fun, man. Is that on Facebook? Uh, it's on Facebook. We post uh, on the day of. So we release the burger the day of on no Thursdays. Uh, what it's going to be uh, with a couple hours before. The so burgers be are always place. different. Every always changing. Weekend, yeah. um, something we embraced last year is a vegan option. It's always changing as well. Um, so you know, we're 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 really trying to uh, up the burger game here in the city. And, I love it. And sell out the back door, and, and we're really excited for this year. I love uh, that. Last year was a great success. We yeah. got some, we've got something really, really cool, really surprising. It's uh, a new idea that we're going to be doing out the back door. So, so we're going to uh, come for the back door. Yes, and, and maybe have some brisket, so. brisket burgers at the back door. Yeah, maybe. Just out out don't out his idea. Don't out yeah. Him. He's all like, man, cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> that's that our secret. That yeah, shit. that's our burger. <laughs> Thanks. Maybe I'll have to oh, throw oh. in a poutine, poutine mini pierogi poutine bar at the back door as yeah, well. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. It was nice to meet you.